Men have always dominated the entrepreneurial world. Men have historically been some of the most notable and successful entrepreneurs worldwide. The corporate environment is evolving, though. Women are increasingly taking the lead in becoming successful entrepreneurs. They have left an indelible imprint on many organizations and inspired millions more to do the same. So here we have one of the most successful female entrepreneurs, whose story has greatly inspired others. No list of successful female entrepreneurs will be complete without mentioning Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Gail Winfrey was born in Kosciuszko, Mississippi, on January 29, 1954. Bernita Lee, her mother, was 18 at the time, and Vernon Winfrey, her father, was 20. Bernita moved north to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to find work when Oprah was very young. She intended to relocate her young daughter there when she found work. Meanwhile, Oprah was staying on a Mississippi farm with her grandmother, Patty Mainly. Oprah's grandmother encouraged her love of books by teaching her to read when she was three years old. She began by reading the Bible and quickly became a speaker at her church. She would later perform memorized verses for her grandmother's friends. Oprah began kindergarten at the age of five. She was quickly placed in first grade because she already knew how to read and write. Oprah's grandmother became ill when she was six years old. The young girl was sent to live in a Milwaukee boarding house with her mother and half-sister, Patricia. Bernita worked as a maid cleaning houses and was sometimes forced to rely on welfare to support her family. Her job kept her very busy, and she spent the majority of her free time with Patricia and her children. After a little over a year in Milwaukee with her mother, Oprah was sent to Nashville, Tennessee, to live with her father and stepmother, Selma. They were relieved to have the seven-year-old living with them because they were unable to have children of their own. Finally, Oprah could enjoy the experience of having her own bed at bedroom. Oprah was enrolled in Wharton Elementary School and allowed to skip a grade once more. The third grader was overjoyed that her parents took her to the library and valued her education. The family attended church on a regular basis, and Oprah found more opportunities for public speaking even at such a young age. Vernon took his daughter back to Milwaukee to see her mother after she finished third grade. Bernita had given birth to a son named Jeffrey in the time since Oprah had left. The three children shared a room in the family's two-bedroom apartment. Vernon returned in the fall to take Oprah back to Nashville, but she chose to stay in Milwaukee with her mother and start fourth grade. In her mother's absence, Oprah turned to TV for company and had her first thoughts of becoming famous one day. Oprah was nine years old when she was first sexually abused. Oprah's 19-year-old cousin raped her while babysitting Bernita's children, took her out for ice cream, and told her to keep it a secret. She did, but this was not the end. Over the next few years, she would face more abuse from a family friend and an uncle. For years, she kept quiet about everything. Oprah was unable to discuss her sexual abuse with her mother, and Vernita gave the teenager little guidance. As a result, Oprah began to act out. She would skip school, date boys, steal money from her mother, and even run away. Bernita couldn't stand it any longer, so Oprah was sent back to Nashville to live with her father. Oprah discovered she was pregnant when she was only 14 years old. She was able to keep the pregnancy a secret from her parents until she was seven months along. She went into early labor the day after telling her father about the pregnancy. She gave birth to a baby boy named Canaan. She named him Canaan because Canaan means new land, new life. But Canaan died two weeks later. Two years later, after that time, Oprah gets back on track. When Oprah was 16, she read Maya Angelou's autobiography, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, and it changed her life. It changed the teen's perspective, and she later stated, I read it several times. I'd never read a book that validated my own existence before. Dr. Angelou would later become one of Oprah's close friends. This experience changed her outlook, and she began to get her life back on track. She concentrated on her education and returned to public speaking, a talent that would start to take her places. It began in 1970 when she won a speaking competition at the local Elks Club. 
The prize was a four-year college scholarship. The following year, Oprah was chosen to attend the White House Conference on Youth in Colorado. She and one other student represented Tennessee. When she returned, Nashville's WVOL radio station requested an interview with the enthusiastic teenager. This led to another opportunity when the station asked her to represent them in the Miss Fire Prevention Beauty Pageant. Oprah was the first African American to win the competition. The same radio station would provide Oprah with her first experience in journalism. She accepted an offer to record her voice after the beauty pageant. The vivacious teenager was no stranger to public speaking, so it was only natural for her to accept the part-time job reading the news. At just 17 years old, Oprah finished out her senior year of high school and remained working at the station. She had already secured a full college scholarship, and her future was bright. She would attend Tennessee State University, be crowned Miss Black Tennessee at 18, and go on to build a successful career in media. Oprah began her career in broadcast media as soon as she enrolled at Tennessee State, working at a nearby Nashville radio station. She quickly moved to television, where she became the youngest news anchor and the first African-American anchor at Nashville's WTVF. After moving to Baltimore, Maryland, where she joined the news team at WJZ, Oprah's first stint as a talk show host began. She was quickly hired as a co-host for the local talk show People Are Talking. This was her first step toward greater things. Oprah's next career move took her from the Atlantic to Lake Michigan. In 1984, she moved to Chicago to work for WLS, where she took over the low-rated morning television show AM Chicago. Her personality, style, and ability to talk to people about real issues propelled the show from last place to first place in less than a year. Between January 1984 and September 1986, Oprah led the program into national syndication, renamed it The Oprah Winfrey Show and easily overtook the top-rated Donahue within one month of its debut. Oprah's show was significant because it was the first hugely successful entry of a woman into a traditionally male-dominated profession. Winfrey also began her Hollywood career as an actor in 1985, when she played Sophia in Steven Spielberg's adaptation of Alice Walker's novel The Color Purple. For that role, she received an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. In 1998 she began a new career as a producer. She produced and starred as Seta in an adaptation of Toni Morrison's novel Beloved. Winfrey took over as editor-in-chief and publisher of O, oh, the Oprah Winfrey magazine in 2000. It was named the most successful publishing startup in history by Fortune magazine. She stepped down as editor in 2009, and while O, oh, like other print media, has seen a decline in revenue in recent years, it still exists. Winfrey and former Nickelodeon producer Geraldine Laybourne co-founded the successful cable station Oxygen in 2011. The following year, she launched OWN, the Oprah Winfrey Network, an American pay television channel co-owned by Discovery Incorporated and Harpo Studios. Harpo Productions, Harpo is Oprah spelled backward, produced a television adaptation of Zora Neale Hurston's 1937 novel Their Eyes Were Watching God in 2005 and Harpo Films signed a deal with HBO in 2008 to produce series, documentaries, and film. Charlotte's Web, 2006, B-Movie, 2007, and The Princess and the Frog, 2008, all featured Winfrey as a voice actress, 2010. In 2018, she played Mrs. Witch in Ava DuVernay's second film adaptation of Madeleine Lengel's young adult novel A Wrinkle in Time. Winfrey has co-authored five books, the most recent of which was published in 2019 and titled The Path Made Clear, Discovering Your Life's Direction and Purpose. In March 2019, Apple CEO Tim Cook announced that Winfrey, along with director Steven Spielberg and actress Jennifer Aniston, would collaborate on original programming for a new streaming service. Her initial programming plans include two documentaries, one on mental health and one on the costs of workplace sexual harassment. Forbes magazine lists Winfrey as the world's only African-American billionaire, with a net worth of $2.5 billion in August 2022. 
She is also well known for her charitable work. She established the Oprah Winfrey Foundation, a private charity, in 1987. The foundation, a crusader for women and children, has given thousands of grants to nonprofits that support the inspiration, empowerment, and education of women, children, and families all over the world. Having donated $400 million in her career as of 2022, 72,000 people educated, 75 million meals served. In 2007, Oprah Winfrey established the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy for Girls as a gift and pledged to Nelson Mandela. It is a South African academic institution. Winfrey has donated approximately $140 million of her own money through the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy Foundation to assist the girls at this school in realizing their full potential. Without a doubt, Oprah Winfrey is a huge inspiration for men and women all over the world. She rose from the ashes and went on to host a successful talk show for nearly three decades. She now has her own network as a result of this. Oprah Winfrey's journey and trials undoubtedly teach us a lot. Your past doesn't define you. Don't let your past experiences define you. Instead of basing your identity on a previous life of poverty, abuse and self-destructive behavior, you have to focus on your potential and start it on a new path. Don't be afraid to try something new. Don't let the fear of failure prevent you from taking chances. Let's work to be better versions of ourselves each day and keep spreading the joy of belief to everyone around us. Thank you for spending your precious time with us. Make sure you already subscribe to this channel and turn the notification on so never miss our upcoming video. Please do support us to build this channel just by clicking the like button. Comment down below if you have any request about some topics or someone and share this video to your beloved one and social media. See you on our next video. Bye.